Hey boozers, how you guys doing? I am going to say this is obviously not for the vegetarians out there, but it's for the meat eaters. I am going to be doing up a three whiskey slow cooked pork, uh, pork ribs. You know, I'm going to be using the side ribs that I got today. I've got three different types of whiskeys. I've got cold cock, which is like a sweet whiskey. I've got Crown Royal, which has got that sweetness to it, but it's on also a cusp of a, a little bit of a bitter. And I've got Canadian Club that does have that bitterness to it. I've also cheated a little bit today. I've got the Wild Whiskey Smoked Barbecue from Clubhouse to add a little bit more of a barbecue flavor. But I've got a couple of spices in here as well. And we're gonna put it all together and hopefully it turns out. All right. Let's get started here. But before we get started, I think I'm gonna have to do something else here first. In order to make this kind of stuff, I'm gonna need to drink myself. So, I'm gonna pull out something that I got from, cra uh, from the Beer Vault, not Craft Cellars, uh, from the Beer Vault. And it was recommended to me by the guys over at Beer Vault. And it's Railroads Brewing's Lager. Now this apparently is a really good lager, um, but I haven't tried it yet. So we're gonna try it together right in here, right now. And it's coming in, if I remember correctly, at 5%. I've been drinking a lot of lagers lately and it's becoming winter time and it should be more stouts and more uh, porters, but uh, ingredients are water, hops, malt, yeast, and it's a traditional North American style, crisp, refreshing, easy drinking beer. And as I said, coming in at 5% alcohol by volume. Railroad, they're out of, oh, they're out of Calgary. Rail Yard Brewing, I gotta check these guys out. All right, so as you see here, crisp and blurry. Here we go. Yeah, a little bit cloudy, nice carbonation to it. The smell, that ah, smells nice and weedy and everything. All right, cheers. Yep, that's ah, got some good flavor to it. All right, we'll put that down right there. We're gonna make our sauce. Now, as I said, I've cheated a little bit. They're telling me to shake well, so here I am shaking off camera and on camera. All right. So we take the cap off. I still have the damn plastic on there. Ah, all right. I'm already preheating my uh, slow cooker as well. Okay, so we're gonna dab a little bit in here because we're gonna be mixing the meat in there. And we're gonna dab a little bit in here because it's gonna be cooking in there. Now, I also like to use some other stuff as well. A little bit of Liam Parents. Get it uh, a little bit nice and loosed up a bit. Unfortunately, I am Kind of out of HP sauce here. I like the little bitterness of the HP sauce just to throw in there as well. There we go. Got a good glorp. And I don't like using the Canadian HP sauce. I actually like buying the British stuff, which you can find at Sobeys, Safeway. Oh no, you can't find it at Safeway. Walmart, they're actually imported from England. Now, I uh, was given some Epicure stuff, so I'm gonna use a bit of that. And it's a herb and garlic. Throw that in there. I know it sounds kind of disgusting, but trust me, when you slow cook everything, flavors come out beautifully on this. Touch and misses dash in both areas. And I haven't used this yet, but we're gonna try it. This is the three onion from Epicure. Again, a wedding gift. I'm not quite sure what a three onion is, is it? Well, it's green, smells like dope, you know, good stuff. Now, uh, I'm a garlic fan. 
So I throw a little bit more garlic in there just to give it some extra flavor. And I love my onions. So toss a little bit more onion powder in there as well. Now, here's where the fun part gets and you start to get feeling a little bit tipsy. Grab yourself a shot glass. I got myself a loop net one. I don't remember ever owning a loop net shot glass. Must have been a good night. Now, we're gonna be about six ounces in, but I'm gonna be doing about half a shot each just to get the flavors going. Now, you could do this on a barbecue as well, but I warn you, I've learned this the hard way, if you do it over a barbecue, you will have fires. That is guaranteed. Because the alcohol drips onto the, uh, it starts to really get fiery. All right, two down, one to go. What is it they say? Don't mix your alcohol? Meh, whatever. All right, we got all three in there. Next up, I'm gonna grab a fork. Give it a little bit of a stir. Now, my sauce, by the looks of things, I'm going to probably need a little bit. Oh no, it seems to be coming out nicely. Let's see a little bit more of the barbecue sauce. All right, give this a stir as well. All right, next up, take my rings off because I hate having my rings in raw meat. Grab these, grab your fork, quickly flip it over, stab it a few times, and flip it over again. Stab it a few more times, and then throw it into the sauce and mix it around there. Now I probably have to mix it around a little bit more, as you see, nice and easy, flip, flip, and then dump. My sauce in there has got a little bit more. Now, another thing people ask me, why don't you use salt and pepper? Do you know how many restaurants use salt and pepper that it's just driven me nuts that I just can't stand salt and pepper in my food? Hell of a lot, actually. It's been a lot of places that <clears throat> use way too much salt or sodium, and way too much pepper. And it's just, it's ruined the flavor for salt and pepper for me. So I try not to use it, I use other things, like the garlic and onions, and people don't like it. You can mix whatever kind of stuff you want. I mean, this is only mild suggestions, obviously. And flip that over. It coats the uh, ribs quite nicely. Throw that around there a little bit. See, if you didn't have that, you have more sauce on there and it'd be harder to actually have stuff left over. So that's why I put a little bit of Lee and Parents in there. So it just gives it a little bit of a kick. And also it's nice and pretty much light and juicy and it's a, it's a good sauce. It's a good sauce to uh, mix around. Throw that in there as well. Now, as well, if you really want, you can add extra things to that. I'm actually gonna throw the rest of the sauce into here so that we have something that it cooks out of. You can throw different veggies in here if you want. For me, I like to leave it like that or I like to add something else as well, which I might just add right now. I like to throw in some onions. Now, also remember to wash your hands constantly. And no, this is not a butter knife. This is the actual steak knife I'm using. Ugh. That doesn't seem to be wanting to cut the onions very well. Use another knife I really wanted to, but yeah, whatever. I really don't worry about thickness of onions because I'm special like that. I'm try and separate them out and put them on top. Give a little bit of extra flavor and kick. You could also make this a little spicy if you want to. Um, I've known to add Tabasco into my barbecue sauces or Frank's hot sauce. Tabasco is usually the better one. Or if you really like it hot, you can go with the Carolina Reapers or whatever else you have, yeah. And cover it up like that. And let it sit for four to six hours. Afterwards, we'll be back and uh, I'll show you how it looks. All right, I go back to uh, drinking and cleaning this up. 
and we'll see you guys in a bit. Thanks. Well, I love to show you the end product, but I'm not going to be able to uh, due to the fact that I pretty much have a few things to do. I'll take a picture over the end and probably show you at the end of the video what it looked like. Plated and everything. I think I'll be all fancy and dancy like that. But for now, this is what we're looking at right here. Got a lot of beautiful juices coming from it. Beautiful smells. Very nice whiskey note on the back no on the uh, nose, and the onions and, and garlic are coming through nicely. All right, till next time, folks. I'm PK saying cheers, stay frosty, and here's a picture of the finished product. Have a good night.